Welcome guys, welcome back to the London Craftsman channel. Thanks for watching and today I've got my beautiful assistant aka Gina, my wife, to give me a hand because um, she is the SketchUp specialist and we're going to be showing you a angles unit, um, a unit that goes underneath a staircase from start to finish. So stay tuned, watch to the end and I hope you enjoy. So we really need some more Instagram followers. We're on about 840 followers at the moment, which is pretty rubbish, considering we have nearly 22,000 YouTube subscribers. So please head over to our Instagram page um, at The London Craftsman and you'll be able to follow us, what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, looking at our stories. We've got lots of updates on there, what we're getting up to, and it's a quicker way to contact us and ask us questions as well. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing is starting up our SketchUp um, application. Um, as you can see at the top of our screen, we've got SketchUp Pro 2020. And when you click on it, this pops up. We're selecting um, millimetres, architectural, um, because we want to be very precise with our drawing. Oh, and there we go, it pops up. Let's get rid of that little window on the right so we can maximise it. Last time we kept that up. All right. Fine. There we go, so we've got full screen this so, time. I'm going to get rid of her. I've just rubbed her out with the eraser tool. We also had last time somebody that said, if you go to edit, do you remember when we had guides? Yeah. He said, if you go to, you can do undo guides all in one hit. Uh, oh, yeah, delete guides. I see yeah. that. Oh. So thanks for that little tip. Okay. I didn't know that. Anyway. All right. So we're going to be creating the under stairs um, unit. And we're going to, first of all, draw out the floor plan of the under stairs section. So this one is... Um, we click use our rectangle tool, click um, where all the axes meet and pull out a rectangle. So this is the floor plan of the space. That's right. Um, so we're going to put the measurements in using typing it in. So our on-site size is 1758 and we're going to do it as a depth of 600. Um, and so I did a comma to separate them and then I'm going to press enter and it will draw out that unit. So... Um, this is what we're making, my hand-drawn drawings, my technical drawings, a couple of little one-off sketches there, which we'll go into into a little bit of detail. Um, and there you go. That is what we're actually trying to achieve at the moment. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use our push and pull tool to get to the height of the unit. I've just moved my drawings. Thank you. And the height overall site height is um, 1690. So I height... I clicked on the space and I pulled it up to create that height. Now, as you can see, you, if we go to um, our views and I'm going to go front view to make it bigger and using this tool, the zoom extends, which makes it as big as the page. Um, now, obviously, this is a, a stair unit, so it's not a rectangle. Um, the left hand side um, has a site size of 160. So I'm going to use my measuring tape, click on the bottom line and I'm... Oh, and it should have a line that kind of pulls up. So when I did that last time, I didn't click on it properly. So 160, enter, and it gives you that line. Now to create my stairs, I'm going to use um, the pencil tool. Just gonna click on where that meets to the top to create our um, stair unit. We're now gonna delete this space because we don't need it. That's your stairs. I'm gonna use my push and pull tool and push it all the way back until it kind of grays out and it disappears. So if I use my orbit tool and spin it, you can see it remains a solid block. So like this that. is the space that we have remaining on site. So this is the actual site opening. Yeah. If you didn't use the push and pull tool and you simply, let me go back, undo push and pull. If you went to the rubber and deleted that, it delete and I use my orbit tool, it deletes all the inside and it really ruins the, the drawing. Yeah, so it's easier just to push and pull exactly. it to get rid of it. So mm. let's go undo erase. You can use alt backspace as well to do that. So my push and pull tool, push it all the way back. There we go, it disappears and it remains solid. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to front view and make sure it's nice and big. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at um, 
the margins. margins around the edge that's right um so looking at it from the floor we're going to use um 60 millimeters so i'm going to click on the bottom pull it up 60 and there we go left hand side we're going to use what would you well, say? well i've already worked this out with the pencil and i've worked out because of all my divisions um it works out at 33 mil okay but again if you're doing this off the cuff and you just want to just show them rather than going by these drawings. But you wouldn't need to do your divisions until later if you Okay, well, to. let's just pick a number then. I'm going to go with 40. Okay. For, cause that's Whatever your mark, yeah, that's drawing. a nice trim size anyway. This unit is going underneath the staircase, step back ever so slightly, so it's not on the front. So the trims won't be on the front of the stair string. Everything is literally stepped back. Okay. So we want a nice margin of trims. Yep. So let's pull our trim down this way, making sure it's parallel mm -hmm. and not in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And that we're going to give a 30 mil Well, trim. it's totally up to you. You can pick your numbers. Let's do 30. We don't want them too small and skimpy. No. So you want them to look planned. Yep, exactly. So... Um, now that I've got all of my guides in, I'm going to draw in this box because it's not a rectangle. I'm going to use the pencil tool, and you can and where it says intersection. So just going over it, it generally will take you to that point, mm -hmm. and then to the next one. Keep following it around. To the next one, to the next one, and whilst at the moment you can see the line is quite a dark color, and as soon as I join it into um, a whole shape, a whole shape it changes colour. It's telling you that it's not connected all properly. Yeah, so it is connected now, so it's when, when it's bold, it's not. Yeah, that inside space now is our make size of our entire carcass. Yeah, so I'm going to delete guys. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, so... Thanks for that tip. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we know that the carcass is going to be 18 mil throughout, so I can use my... Um, what's this called? Uh, offset tool. Offset, that's the one. And... Select the, the space, pull it in, and I'm going to do 18 mil because our carcass is 18 mil. Um, so this drawing, because it is an angled unit, we are actually going to use this for our cutting list and creating our sizes. So we really do need to be as accurate as possible. Okay. And this is more a technical drawing rather than one for the customer, mm -hmm. even though you can have it for the customer as we well. We mainly use it because we need to get the angle sizes. For example, on the right hand side, if you use your mouse at the top, we need to know the length of that whole right hand side to the tip. To the tip up here. Yeah, well, we'll get to that at, at the end, but yes. we need to start dividing up the, the space first. Okay, so each of, so let's measure the space inside space. So the inside space here is 1642, mm -hmm. and we're going to um, create three sections. Um, now, because it's one, so 1642, let's put that number on our calculator, 1642. Or two and we're going to take away our upright divisions um because they're going to be made in sections it's we're going to be taking away 36 mil for each of those uprights um within the space yep. so take away my thir first 36 and my second 36 you'll understand in a minute in two minutes when when it starts which is 1570 and now we're going to divide that number in by three to the give us spaces we three have. spaces yeah so that's 523.3, but let's just do 523. Yeah. So using my measuring tool, move it across, 523. Um, and then I'm going to do my 18 mil side and my another 18 mil side. 523. 18 mil side and another 18 You can side. make the whole triangle up if you had space and you didn't mind maneuvering a massive carcass, you can make this as one big carcass and have one 18 mil division in the center. Well, two 18 mil divisions. But what we're trying to do is achieve three separate boxes here, um, making it more manageable to make, paint and install. This is the way I like to make it. It's a little bit more work because you've got a little bit more machining, but uh, it's easier. Okay, so I'm just put, pulling my sides all the way up and then I'm deleting those extra bits there. Showing the sides running all the way up. Um, let's move that one along. Do the same over here. You may have different preferences. You might want the tops and the bottoms to run through rather than the sides running through. Yeah, it's, it's personal preference. Yeah. Really. There we go. So, 
So now we've got our, you can see the sides um, and the lines throughout where how you can see how it's going to join together essentially mm -hmm. okay so now that we've got this um space we are going to add um the shelves in and things like that mm -hmm. so this customer obviously wants to maximize its space um within the wardrobe not wardrobe under stairs unit mm -hmm. so we we're going to have a shelf on in this section here so to do that i'm going to make it so that it goes all the way across yeah. in that top section. Just give yourself an easy life. You don't, unless you have to, don't start your shelf on an angle. It's just an extra angled cut. This is why we do our first shelf at the, you know, on a f upright rather than in a, the angled top. Exactly. Mm. So here's an 18 mil shelf because that space is less than 600. So yeah. we don't need to be 25 mil. Okay. Remember your spans. So that's a good point. Yeah. So using our push and pull tool, we can push the space back oh, that way and our backing and create, um, push it back as further as your backing. So um, we have a six mil backing, so five, nine, four. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to push that all the way back. This customer is going to have a um, an open space here for things like hoovers and mops and things mm. like that mm -hmm. a little space at the top Nothing. which is handy for maybe cleaning products or whatever mm -hmm. so over this side the customer has asked to have um, some drawers drawers are really popular um there's companies out there who make these under stairs units and have made drawers utilizing drawers really popular but they're a pain in the ass yeah, okay. Well, yeah, it's a lot more work, isn't it? It's just more work, uh, more to go wrong, more to adjust. You know, when you've got lots of fascias, um, it depends how you make your drawers, I guess. I put my fascias on last, so I make my drawer, yeah. and then I've got an extra fascia that goes over that drawer. So once everything's in and my drawers are in, mm. I can then just get my packers out and screw my first fascia on, next one, and then start doing my lines. Yeah. Other people have their fascia on their drawer. So you've got to be a lot more accurate. So for the sake of an extra piece, it makes my life a lot easier on site. Yeah. Okay, so um, if we're looking at this um, first box, so this is going to have a drawer in it. Now we need to think about the fact that our drawer runner's mm -hmm. height are, is it 45 mil? Uh, 44. Yeah. We, we have inside mounted drawer runners. We okay. generally use those. So we need to check that there's enough space in this section here for that drawer runner. Well, you've also got to think... Um, oh no, sorry, you're right. So I was thinking about draw cheek, but there is no door, so we look. don't need a cheek. So I'm going to go up from the bottom of the carcass line, mm -hmm. up 44. Would you leave a three mil margin there as well for the bottom of the draw? Um, no, um, by the time the draw runner can rest on the bottom. Okay. Um, and when we screw the second part of the run onto the draw, that allows for 11 mil gap. Okay. The way we work it. We always screw the second part, the thinner part of the runner, to the directly flush with the underside of the drawer. When you click it in place, it will then leave 11 mil. Okay, so um, how wide is your... 13.5. Okay, let's pull that across. 13.5. Two of them is 26, but I allow... Um, I make the drawer a mil smaller, because the worst thing you ever really want is to make a drawer too wide. Um, it just won't slide in and out, it'll be too tight. It's better to be a mil um, less wide to your drawer than the opening, than big. Yeah. Um, because the runners can take um, being uh, pulled in a little bit. Okay, so I've added my little runners here. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to do the draw fascias, uh, not draw fascias, the drawers. inside drawers. Yeah. So you need to really work out, realistically, without going into detail, I know that the runner... Um, allows for the drawer to be 11 mil off the inside of the bottom. Okay. So would I go up a... Up 11? 11. And that's the start of your drawer bottom. Uh -huh. So remember, this is these, these dimensions, if you're trying to do this yourself, is the, the big part of the runner, as you can see, rests on the bottom of the carcass. And the other part of the runner needs to be directly flush with the underside of your drawer. And this will leave you a margin of 11 mil at the bottom. Okay. It makes life so much easier. There's so no... we're going to want the drawer to be in line with... Well, um... you need to work out your margin, really. What gap do you want underneath your carcass angle here? 
You need to, what do you want to allow okay. here? I'm going to draw in this side. Okay, up you to draw, the top. draw it all in and we can delete bits. Yeah. So, yeah, what would you like to leave as your margin? Let's leave 25 mil just to be safe. Okay, so selecting our thing. Yeah, tool. that's our guide. Our guide, that's it. So let's click that. As long as it's not smaller than your draw runner, because otherwise it might look a little bit weird on the left. Okay, that's fine. So let's get rid of that space. Mm -hmm. And the one at the top right. Go. There we go. So that is our draw, effectively, yeah? Okay. We can also draw in the sides yeah. if you want to. Would I go... It would be from the side. You want to draw it in. Draw sides in 18 yeah. now? Yeah. I was just thinking where your your bottom obviously sits inside. Well, we that's another story, isn't it? I'll um, rebate. We won't show that oh. because I rebate the bottom of my bottoms in into the sides, but that's for another day. This is just showing you... There we go, 18 yeah. mil. And I would have the sides running through, as you can see, on your drawers. So when I pin and glue the drawer together, you can f easily fill those pinholes on the side and there's no end grain. And then the end grain on the front, you can see right now, gets covered with a draw fascia. Uh -huh. okay. What are you drawing that 18 mil in for? Oh, silly me. It's not 18 mil, is it? No, just six. Six you, I don't. Okay, well, I I don't necessarily draw that in, though, Gina. But there you go. Georgina's drawn the bottom in. I don't need that for myself. Like I said, I rebate these in. If you wanted to be correct, we could just show you a rebate, but it's up to you. Do you want to show the rebate? No, nah, it's alright. Okay, <laughs> another day. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the colours just to show what is the draw runner, and just use the paint bucket tool mm -hmm. over there. And, and I'm just going to get a, a dark grey. And I'm going to zoom in. Highlight those colours. So there's my draw runners mm. um, to make it a little bit easier. You could also, because it looks a little bit busy at the bottom, why don't you highlight all the voids all the way around the drawer in like a, a luminous colour? Yes, let me just get rid of that one. That's mm -hmm. the voice. So maybe like a lime green or something or whatever you want. And so basically, we're going to colour in all the voids all the way around so you can see what the drawer is. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And in a similar way, we would, would section out this draw, this side as well. Yeah. Um, to create the drawers mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So why don't we just use this middle section instead of, I know we're going a little bit off the cuff here, but like, why don't we just show, show a drawer, a door on this side? In this middle section. Okay. So what's going to be inside? Just shelving. Okay. Adjustable shelving. Big shelving. Okay. So as with the other carcass, we're going to just put a shelf in where it meets the the angle, angle um, because it's just to create the most usable space. Mm -hmm. Some people you could leave it open to be honest and have a really tall space, mm -hmm. but it's adjustable, so they can move that shelf wherever they want to which which is adjustable this one that won't be adjustable no okay mm, i wouldn't make that adjustable i'd make the one in the angle fixed okay so um and then just, but you could leave it out if you, you want yeah to. you could do i mean it doesn't have to be fixed but i mean you could do two shelves here possibly three very be very small and make your shelf two mil smaller in width yeah. And then just have pins. I just have adjustable shelf pins. I use the five mil glass shelf pins, five mil diameter, because they're nice and small. They take a lot of weight. I don't like the metal strips. Um, I don't, I've always stuck to that for the past 10 years. So anything adjustable, we do a run of holes, you know, two runs either side, um, 50 mil increments in between the sets. And like I said, if that, opening width what is that opening on that carcass uh, it's five six five two three oh uh, we've got five two three i'll do five two one as those adjustable shelves but you don't need to show it you know as long as you're leaving Ooh. two mil difference between oh gosh <laughs> um it's going a bit mental um, there we go you... nope doesn't want to do it Let's see. five nine five yeah yeah that's fine you don't necessarily have to show that 
um, that they're adjustable by allowing an extra meal with a side because you wouldn't even notice it on SketchUp. No, that's right. A lot of people ask, do I make cutting lists on SketchUp by using SketchUp? But I don't. Um, I know you have to... We're sort of making this in a different way. Other people would make these drawings up as components, like draw the whole rectangle in rather than pushing and pulling. Oh, okay. So cut lists for me, whenever I try doing a cutting list off of SketchUp, because you can get an add-on for it, it never works for me. <laughs> so it's this, so easy once you've got this drawing just to make yourself a cutting list. Anyway, we have these printed up, these little grids, and we have component name, amount, length, width, thickness, edging on the length, edging on the width, um, if we ever needed it edged by a company, and the material. Um, and it's so easy. You just go, okay, unit A, unit B, unit C, and you just take your measurements with the the measuring tool. Exactly. It takes five minutes to get a cutting list off of that. So I don't so know. So let's, let's have a look at these sections for a cutting list purpose. Um, so if we go to the big section, mm -hmm. we're going to use our measuring tool and we're going to go from the tip, the very tip mm -hmm. of, of, of the side yeah. um, all the way down to the bottom. Yeah, so we want that component which length. Which is one, five, five, five. Okay, so because I know it is, it needs to be cut, if we're going to get that ordered in for us, we would say we would add on another 10 mil just to leave it for our cutting on site. Okay. Um, so if I'm writing on my cutting list, I'd write 1565 and then tiny little letters at the top, I write long so I know it needs to be cut. So mm -hmm. I always write long on anything that needs scribing or cutting again. Okay. Um, and I know I've made it bigger than the actual cutting list is exactly. telling me. Exactly. And similarly, when we take our measurements here, we're looking at the longest. Yeah, from that tip, okay. you've got to go diagonal to diagonal, really. That one to that it's one. not a true yeah. measurement when you do that, but just allow 10, 15 mil. So I'd be doing 725, Okay. allowing for two angle cuts. Yeah. So if you want to work out what the angle is on this, um, if you go to Tools and go to Protractor, um, put the protractor at the angle Click it. S click it. Select the side. So we're clicking that one. And right. we're going to yeah. select the other side. And that will give us this angle here. So that's 49 degrees. So I show that. At the bottom, it yeah. shows it in the corner. So click on that one side. Click on the other side. And it's 49 degrees. We use a plunge saw when we do our angle cuts. And I know most saws only allow you to do up to 45 degree cuts. But you do have a little bit of clay on your plungy. Or your track saw, you can have a change the tab and you get up to 48. Okay. So there's not going to make hardly any difference. So that one degree, if I was doing that, I think we have, um, when we are starting this in the next few days, this job, delivery is turning up in a few hours. Um, when I come to cut that, I'm going to set the saw up to 48 degrees and um, it's going to be so minute, it's not going to affect anything. Yeah. So you can um, often, you can look at all the angles to work it out, just yeah. make sure everything is the same. Zoom in. Or zoom, zoom out. There we go. Yeah. So, yeah, so look, you've got component sizes there of the sides of the drawer. Yeah, so if you want to look at the, the angle of, for example, this space, which mm -hmm. might be slightly different, click on there, click on the other side, 49. 49 again. But if you take the other measurement, say this one. Oh, that one's going to be yeah. different. So there to here, it's 131. Yeah, it'd be the opposite, wouldn't it? So it's basically 180 degrees, isn't it? It's worked out. Straight line. Oh, oh no, I deleted something. Undo mm -hmm. erase. Um, there we go. Yeah. So that's enough to get your cutting list for the carcasses. Shall we show them quick um, how we work out the, 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 the um, door sizes? You can do. So mm. we show them how to save this. So now we've worked out the interior. Well, ideally, we should have done the door sizes first. Mm -hmm. um, in the drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for, I'm going to select all to make it easier. Oh, select it all. No, yeah, so from the top to the bottom, select it all. Or you could have right clicked and press select all. Oh, can you? Try, okay. it, try now. Right. Right click. Select all, all, all. connected. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Keep away. And then I'm going to go edit copy and I'm going to Paste it, file. Oh, no, edit, paste, sorry. And I've got my... Two together here. Two together. Just... I'm going to click it next to each other just because... Get rid of this thing now. Oh. It's been up here, all this colour. Sorry. 
um, just to make it easier. So I know it's on the right axis because sometimes if you move it slightly over, it might not be on the right axis. axis. Okay. So we've got two now. We're doing this just so we can rub one of these out, yeah? Exactly. About my right here, so we don't have to redo. We basically want to show you how to do all the fascias now. Yeah. And what I'm the just going to use my push and pull tool and push everything back to the front. Um, there we go. And then I'm going to erase all the inside lines for each carcass. Oh, oh. oh no. See, you have to be. Re if you make a mistake, undo erase is always your best tool. Undo button gives you the opportunity to go back. There we go. There's probably a quick way of doing it. What is there? I mean, maybe before we got to this point, we could have saved this file. Yeah. So as we were making the stair unit at the beginning of the video, we could have saved it when we got to this stage right now. Exactly. So we were had it for this. We did it slightly different this time than the yeah, last video. Yeah, last week. <laughs> Depends how planned we are on the day. Most of these videos are off the cuff with us. Okay, so we've now got our outside doors sizes. Yeah. Yep. Um, but the actual sizes you take off. Well, I allow three mil. Um, so... I know my trims are always step back from my doors. That's the way I do my doors and my trims. Some people have their trims flush with their doors. Some people have them forward. My thing is the trims are always flush with the carcass. Then the doors are in front. So I know the surrounding. Let me use the mouse. Um, all the outside lines all the way around are my exact sizes. Don't need to change those. Mm -hmm. All we need to do is put a three mil gap here and a three mil gap here. And we will basically have our... Whips of your doors? Yeah. Okay, so let's go... So 1.5. Oh, I see. I was going to go 3 mil there. Yeah, no, well, yeah. this is where... Because we've already... That's our centre line. Oh, I see. That's our carcass centre line. zoom all the way in. Yeah, you really need to zoom in to do this. It's not very easy to see 3 mils. Um, so 1.5... And 1.5. Just make sure, just draw that, or just measure it, just make sure it's done three mil because sometimes it rounds up to the nearest, yeah, mil. So that could have even been two mil or four mil if mm. SketchUp isn't set up properly. My, the way I generally do this anyway is I would... Make them all the same size. I will just add them all up. I would. So basically what I do when I'm doing a carcass, I measure from here, let's see. Measure from here to here, yeah. and then take off my two three mil gaps. So okay. that'll be sixteen seventy two, and then divided by three. So what I have here is all my sections. So I've got section A, section B, section C, and I've got all my measurements on there that I've taken off. So I do a little quick freehand sketch, and then I draw the overall length of each piece, like the shortest length and the longest length of that side and this and the same on everything with the angles and I make a note of the angle that I'm working to on this as well. Fascias as well, I draw out my fascias and I draw every dimension on there. Back in the day I used to draw out one of these full size. I did one about six or seven years ago. I used to back in the day loads of times didn't I? I oh, loads yeah. of these jobs. You used to get the customer in the workshop and just see this whole Two and a half by two and a half mm -hmm. meter MDF on the floor, drawn out, take me a while, two three hours to draw it. And then they want to change something, to rub it all out. Anyways. This is literally clicking, isn't it? Yeah, and you're done. Be that. Well, like on the left, the guides that Georgina's left in, she could draw those in with a pencil. Shall we just do that just to finish it off? Just to finish it off, you go point to point. You have to really zoom in to get to that point, which is quite annoying. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, zoom in with your wheel. There we go. And then and zoom out with your wheel. If you zoom out here, and then then zoom back in there. There we go. You can do everything all with your wheel of your mouse. And again, zoom out at the bottom of the page. And then zoom in at the top of the page. Oh, I never get that. Yeah. It's so much quicker than using changing tools. Okay. And we can draw and delete out that middle line. And we can fill that with black. When you get the old, uh, yeah, select a colour, and we can turn that into a gap. Cool. 
yeah, you can start seeing it now. Mm. But yeah, I mean, you don't necessarily have to fill the other one in if you don't want to, but. Mm, okay, I'll do it. I don't know what that is. We want to get that across. So maybe um, send us some questions. If you've got any questions, how to do bits and pieces. Um, we did get this request. I forgot your news username. Let's have a little look. No, I can't because I'm recording with my phone. Um, a YouTube um, subscriber, I believe, um, asked me, I forgot your name, just maybe put a little comment in the bar. Um, asked me for this video <laughs> yes, just Sorry. yesterday. Hey, fever. And as all of you probably know, I always leave my videos till last minute to make my videos because I'm always busy. Um, and he asked for an under the stairs angled unit. So this could be for anything. This could be for a loft as well. You can use this to do in a loft wardrobe. Yeah, like in the eaves um, in a loft. Yeah. Yeah, and remember, in the loft, it cannot. The angle could be from front to back in, as well. You yeah. can use it to do the same way rather than um, top to bottom, where you know where the roof slopes well, maybe, down. Yes, yeah. You can, Dif yes. SketchUp is very handy for working out those angles for yeah, those awkward especially shapes. angles. Yeah. Um, we often get a lot of people wanting awkward shaped wardrobes that maximize the space because they go to the big names and they don't necessarily maximize the space and they no. use bigger trims because they have. Um, they, well, they only have certain size carcasses, 400, 500, 600, and they only have like 2.2 .2 high. 2 point, yes. And they're, they, they, they have Specific to start. Specific increments, yeah. They have to have a plinth of 120 and a trim at the top of 100. Lo loads of places I go where their trims are so big, it's so wasted. You can see that we've minimised how many, how big our trims are. 40 is the maximum I'd go on the trims and 50, 60 is for the plinth. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a wrap. Yeah, that's it. Gina always says I go on a little bit, um, but just make sure that you like and subscribe if you like our content. We're on Instagram, do loads on Instagram. Anything else to say? And if you have any other video requests, let us know mm -hmm. and we'll just see what we can do. Thank you. Take Thanks. it easy then. Ciao for now.